hi in our today's video we are talking about covalent bond what is meaning of cohere the meaning of cohere is to gather a bond that is formed by mutual or equal sharing of electrons between two atoms is called as a covalent bond covalent bond is introduced around 1919 moreover when there is overlapping of orbitals between two atoms a bond is formed and that bond is called as a covalent bond now what is the covalent bond a covalent bond is formed by the equal sharing of electrons from both participating atoms the pair of electrons participating in this type of bonding is called a shared pair or a bonding pair having said that why we are doing covalent bond and why covalent bond is formed there are some non metals or there are some atoms that don't lose and gain electrons somehow they need to get stabilization so that is the reason they form covalent bond here you can see elements having very high ionization energies are incapable of transferring electrons and elements having very low electron on affinity and they cannot take up electrons so in this type of atoms a bond is formed by mutual sharing of electrons which is a covalent bond here we have some properties of covalent bond covalent bonding does not result in the formation of new electrons the bond only pairs them because in covalent bond there is no transfer of electrons there are no cations and anions there is nothing like that there is just sharing of electrons when there is just sharing of electrons so simply there are no new electrons they are very powerful chemical bonds that exist between the atoms because yes they are sharing the electrons that's why they are strong chemical bonds most compounds having covalent bonds exhibit relatively low melting points and boiling points now they're saying relatively they are comparing covalent bonds with ionic bonds ionic bonds are strong because they have ions in them they have cations and anions but as compared to ionic bonds covalent bonds are not that much strong so that's why their melting points and their boiling points are relatively low than the ionic compounds compounds formed by covalent bonding don't conduct electricity due to the lack of free electrons of these compounds don't have any cations and anions so as a result there are no ions if there are no ions so it means like they are unable to conduct the electricity covalent compounds are not soluble in water same is the reason why they are not soluble in water because any compound that is soluble in water it is soluble because it break down into ions just say for example nacl it has n positive and cl negative that is why it can dissolve into water but in case of covalent compounds they are unable to dissolve in the water because they don't have any ions they don't have any cations and anions here you can see we have two non metals this is the first non metal and this is the second non metal in both of these atom a and b there are seven electrons in the outermost shell seven here and seven here now they both want to get stable but they are unable to gain electron and of course they are unable to lose all the seven electrons so what will they do they simply share their electrons and this has happened mostly in non metals that they will share their one electron because they both need one electron each to complete their octet by sharing one one electron from both side of atoms as it's mutual sharing it's equal sharing they will form a bond and that bond is called as covalent bond have a look at an example we have hydrogen and chlorine this hydrogen has only one electron in the outermost shell as you can see here and this chlorine has seven electrons in the outermost shell this hydrogen need one more electron in order to get stable and this chlorine also needs one more electron in order to get stable now what they will do definitely they will share their electrons with each other while sharing their electrons they will form a bond and that bond is called as a covalent bond now here living structures are also very important in covalent bonds say for example we have chlorine cl2 here we have chlorine here we have chlorine now we just need to make the electrons that are present in the valence shell 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this chlorine has seven electrons in the outermost shell and this one has also seven electrons in the outermost shell. They will simply show their, these two electrons. When they will show their, these two electrons, they will make a bond between them. And this bond is called as the covalent bond. Same goes for hydrogen. If we have hydrogen here, hydrogen only have one electron in the outermost shell. Hydrogen will show these two electrons. Hydrogen will now show these electrons. Now after sharing these two electrons, hydrogen will form a bond and this bond is called as a covalent bond. Now there are some types of covalent bond. Covalent bonds actually have three types. The first one is single covalent bond. A single bond is formed when only one pair of electrons is shared between the two participating atoms. It is represented by one dash only. We have an example of hydrogen and another hydrogen. Both of these hydrogens, one one electron in their outermost shell, they will show their one one electron and they will make a bond just because it's a single bond. So that is why we are just representing it with one dash. So this is what a single covalent bond is. Here we have an example also a bond is formed between them and that bond is a single covalent bond. Then the second type is double covalent bond. A double bond is formed when two pairs of electrons are shared between the two participating atoms. It is represented by two dashes. We have an example of oxygen molecule. Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in the outermost shell. Both of them need two more electrons each in order to complete their octets. At first, oxygen will show its one pair of electron. Then oxygen decided to show an other pair of electron. Now oxygen is sharing two pair of electrons. So here we have one bond and an other bond. Now let's count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now for the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. This is how both of the oxygens having eight electrons in their outer motions both have a complete octet and they both are stable just because of sharing two pair of electrons. Now because they are sharing two pair of electrons, so they have two bonds between them just like this. Now here we have another example of carbon dioxide triple covalent bond. A triple bond is formed when three pairs of electrons are shared between the two participating atoms. Triple covalent bonds are represented by three dashes. Here we have nitrogen. Nitrogen has five electrons in the outermost shell. Both of these nitrogen needs three more electrons in their outermost shells in order to get stable. They will share three pairs of electrons in order to complete their octets. Because they are sharing three pairs of electrons, so they have three bonds. One, two, and three here. So now let's count. Two and three is five. Now both of these nitrogens have eight electrons in their outermost shell. Here you can see, now it's time to conclude our today's lecture. In covalent bond, we have mutual or equal sharing of electrons. Covalent bond is formed by overlapping of the or Orbitals. There are three more types of covalent bond, single covalent bond, double covalent bond, triple covalent bond. So yes, this is all about our today's lesson. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.